Hi, welcome back to Joe Blogs. In today's episode, I want to talk to you about the Russian economy and specifically the damaging impact that the Ukrainian drone attacks against Russian oil and gas facilities is now having on Russia's income, its economy, and also its ability to produce enough gasoline to feed its own consumers. Over the course of the last six weeks, Ukraine has launched hundreds of drone attacks specifically targeting Russian oil refineries, and at least nine of those drones have successfully struck those refineries, causing fires to break out, and we're now hearing that two of those refineries have had to close down entirely. They're not producing any gasoline products at the moment. And what we're seeing now is Ukraine is ramping up its efforts to produce more and more drones. And Europe and the rest of the world are also providing advanced drone technology to keep Ukrainian supplies going. And it's recently been announced that Ukraine is looking to produce 2 million drones in 2024. And the European Union is looking to supply a further 1 million drones. So that would mean a total of 3 million drones that Ukraine would have to launch attacks during the rest of 2024. And when you compare that to the number of strikes that they've made so far, there is a potential here for the Russian oil and gas facility to be thrown into absolute chaos. And obviously that would have a hugely negative impact on the Russian economy. So in today's video, we'll go through the details of the refineries that have been hit so far and which of them are currently out of action, and what the financial implications of that are for the Russian economy. We'll then talk about what's happening with Russian oil production, the cutbacks that Russia has announced so far, the outright ban on the export of oil gasoline, and also the news now that we're hearing that Russia has started importing gasoline from Belarus. We'll then go on to talk about what's going on with regards to the drone programs that Ukraine is operating, and also look at the announcements that other European countries have made recently with regards to their commitment to supplying drones to Ukraine. And then finally today I'll wrap up with my summaries to what I think the impact of the increased use of drones is going to be on the Russian economy and also on the potential outcome of the war in Ukraine because I do think that this change in tactics by Ukraine is a complete game changer because it's changing the perspective of the war from Russia's point of view. Up until now it's really just been a cost from Russia's perspective. They've had to pour a huge amount of money into keeping the war going. However, what they're now seeing is attacks taking place on Russian soil, and that is changing the landscape entirely. But before we get started on all of that, I'd like to say thank you so much to everyone that's supporting me and the channel. If you bought me a coffee or sent me a YouTube super thanks, thank you so much for the time and effort that you've taken to do that. I really appreciate it. And if you've signed up as a long-term supporter of the channel, either through Patreon or YouTube membership or buy me a coffee membership, thank you for that support. It really does help to keep me going. It keeps me motivated and keeps me posting more videos. Now, before we dive into the detail on the drone attacks, I want to talk to you about today's sponsor, Ground News. I've been working with Ground News since October 2022, and the great thing about them is that they're independent and they're not actually a news publisher, but rather they aggregate stories from all around the world. And why that's fantastic for somebody like me is that it means I can do a deep dive on a particular topic all in one place without having to spend hours and hours searching the internet to uncover every single story. Ground News does it for me. And if we look at the articles about today's video, you can see that Ground News has aggregated 58 different articles from all around the world. And one of the really interesting things that Ground News provides you with is details on whether or not these articles are leaning to the left, leaning to the right, or are center. So you can see what the political bias of those news agencies is. And you can also check out things like the level of factuality that that news agency provides and also who owns it. So you can see whether or not there has been any influence on that story. And the great news is that Joe Bloggs viewers can get a 30% discount on a Ground News subscription by clicking in the description in the link below, which is ground.news forward slash Joe or using the QR code on the screen right now. So as I mentioned at the start of today's video, the change in tactics by Ukraine of launching unmanned drone attacks against Russian oil and gas facilities is a potential game changer. And Ukraine have locked onto this and they've now announced a huge increase 
in the number of drones that they're aiming to produce in 2024. Ukraine is positioning itself as a global pioneer in unmanned technologies, with unmanned aerial vehicles becoming a crucial weapon on modern battlefields. Ukraine's Deputy Minister of Strategic Industries, Hannah Hovvazar, has said that Ukraine is aiming to produce 2 million drones in 2024. During a live TV interview, she said, we are ramping up drone production. And in response to doubts raised by President Zelensky of Ukraine about producing a million drones, she said that in terms of production, we are far beyond a million. And I am confident that this year, we will reach the mark of 2 million drones. She went on to highlight the capability of Ukrainian drone manufacturers and said that they can already produce up to 150,000 units per month. The drone sector in Ukraine involves around 200 domestic companies, with nearly 60 of them already included in state orders. So Ukraine has now successfully positioned itself as the leading producer of drone warfare in the world. However, it's also being supported by a variety of European countries who are also looking to send over a million drones to the country in 2024. A Latvian-led group of 10 countries is aiming to supply over 1 million drones by February 24, 2025, which would be the third anniversary of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Latvia first announced that it would lead the coalition in January 24 and has now signed a letter of intent to build out the project with Ukraine, the Netherlands, Lithuania, Estonia, Sweden, Denmark and Germany. By signing the letter of intent, countries have agreed to commit resources for manufacturing of drones and will deliver these drones and spare parts to Ukraine, where they will be tested, and the coalition will also train Ukrainian troops on how to use them and integrate them with other technologies, the statement said. And the UK government has recently announced an increased package of £325 million to produce at least 10,000 cutting-edge drones to help the fight against Russia. In a significant boost to the 200 million drone package announced by Prime Minister Rishi Sunak in January 24, the now 325 million overall funding commitment will deliver over 10,000 uncrewed platforms, the majority of which will be first-person view drones, 1,000 one-way attack drones which have been researched and developed in the UK, as well as surveillance and maritime drones. Ukraine's Deputy Prime Minister for Innovations, Development of Education, Science and Technologies said in a recent address to the Munich Security Conference that Ukraine had produced 300,000 drones in 2023 and its armed forces had built up an army of drones comprising of 60 UAV strike units. The strike force, he claimed, had destroyed 14,270 pieces of Russian land warfare equipment, including tanks, trucks, self-propelled artillery, multiple launch rocket systems and ammunition storage houses. He also said Ukraine is using a system called NEON, roughly defined as a predictive software tool used to collect cruise missile route data from an enemy attack that can then be used to reposition air defence systems to dodge future volleys. On the 21st of January 2024, the Ukraine war changed forever when Ukraine sent its first weaponized drone, specifically targeting Russian oil refineries located on Russian soil. Up until that point, the main threat to Russia's income from oil and gas were the sanctions that were applied by the West against Russia. And if you follow the channel, you'll know that we've talked about those sanctions at length. They have had a hugely damaging impact on Russia's income, but Russia has successfully managed to pivot and sell more oil specifically to India and China, which has partially offset some of the sales that it lost to the West. So Russia's oil industry is still carrying on and it's still bringing in tens of billions of dollars. But the attacks that are now being launched by Ukraine threaten the oil industry at its source. Because if Ukraine successfully hits more of these facilities, it's going to take out more and more production capability. And that's going to hurt Russia because if you haven't got the oil to export and sell, then obviously you can't make any of the income. And that's why this is a game changer from Ukraine's point of view. Up until now, Ukraine has been entirely on the back foot. It's been defending itself against the offensive coming from Russia. However, by launching these drones, it's now going onto the offensive itself and hitting Russia where it hurts in its pocket. This map shows some of Russia's major oil refineries and provides details of those that have been attacked so far. Now, in terms of determining exactly what's going on on this map, 
The dots represent the location of the oil refineries and the circles that surround those dots indicates the percentage of Russia's total refinery output that that refinery relates to. And the circles that have been colored in relate to those refineries that have been attacked by Ukrainian drones. And we've got a color coding here. The red circles indicate the refineries where the operations have been disrupted. So they've either had to close down or reduce their capacity. The yellow circles relate to refineries that have now had their operations restored so that were previously disrupted, but are now back online. The blue circles relate to those refineries that were not damaged during the drone attacks and the circles that don't have any color in them obviously haven't been attacked at all yet. And what this shows is that in the period between the first attack on the 21st of January and the 17th of March, 11 oil refineries have been attacked. Seven of those refineries reported damage that affected their production and of those Four of them are still disrupted in terms of the damage that's been inflicted. And I think what's really interesting when you look at the map is the geographic range of all of the different refineries that have come under attack. Ukraine has been spreading those attacks. It isn't focusing on one particular region, which obviously would make it slightly easier for Russia to be able to defend. Ukraine is actually looking to attack all of the refineries that are within striking distance. So basically, Russia doesn't know where the next attack is going to come into and it's making it very difficult for Russia to come up with a plan to try to defend all of these facilities. And if you look at the range, it's getting longer. The most recent strikes were almost a thousand miles and Ukraine is constantly developing its technology to be able to carry these drones further. So when you look at this map, there is a potential that all of these refineries could come within range at some point over the next three to six months as Ukraine continues to develop long range weaponry. And the second and really important point to note about this map is that Ukraine is also targeting the terminals. So if you look at the Black Sea section at the bottom of the map, which is close to Crimea, which was annexed in 2014, Ukraine has targeted two refineries that are on the Black Sea coast. And the reason that that's important is that Ukraine has the potential to now attack the terminals that are located there. So this is where the ships are coming in and loading up with fuel. So if Ukraine wants to change its focus and not just focus on refineries, but also target the port, that could have a really damaging impact on Russia's exports because if it's no longer able to actually load up all of the ships, then that's going to have a huge impact on its revenue. And if you look right at the top of the map, you can see that Ukraine has been targeting the port near St. Petersburg as well, which serves the Baltic Sea. So Ukraine has successfully targeted two export routes that Russia is using to export its fuels. And if those routes were closed down, that would have a devastating impact on the Russian economy. And it's now been reported that the Kubyshev refinery near the city of Samara, which was attacked on the 23rd of March, has halted all production following damage from a Ukrainian drone attack. The Rosneft-owned refinery is reported to have halted its CDU-5, one of its two primary refining units, knocking out half of its capacity. And the closure of this unit resulted in the entire plant having to be shut down due to the fact that the second primary refining unit, referred to as CDU-4, which was not directly affected by the drone attack, but was unable to continue operating due to a technical link between it and the damaged CDU-5 unit. The Kubyshev plant is currently Russia's 29th largest oil refinery and produces around 1.4% of Russia's total gasoline and diesel supplies and 2.6% of its fuel oil. Even before Ukraine commenced its drone attacks against the Russian oil and gas industry, the industry was struggling with regards to production and over the last 12 months, Russia has announced cutbacks totaling 1 million barrels of oil per day. The first of these was announced in April 2023, when Russia said it was going to cut 500,000 barrels per day as part of an OPEC Plus initiative to reduce the number of barrels being produced in order to push the price of gasoline and oil up. And that cutback was then followed by another announcement in March 23, that Russia was voluntarily cutting back a further 500,000 barrels. And when you think about this in the context of Russia's total supply, Russia is producing around 9 or 10 million barrels of oil per day, 
When you're cutting back 1 million barrels, that equates to more than 10% of your total production. So that's a significant amount of oil. And when you equate that to the current market price of around $75 for Ural's oil, we are talking about $75 million worth of income that's being lost every single day from Russia's point of view. So this is a meaningful amount. And the reason that Russia is cutting back on its production is a result of the problems that it's encountering. Russia is now more than two years into the war in Ukraine. And one of the direct impacts on the Russian oil and gas industry has been the loss of its partnerships with companies like ExxonMobil, BP and Shell, all of whom designed and developed the facilities that Russia has. They came into the country and set everything up from Russia's point of view and got it operating really efficiently. Now, when you lose that sort of relationship, obviously there's a risk that you can start encountering problems. And over and above the relationship issue, Russia is also struggling with a lack of technology as a result of the sanctions, which prevents it from being able to access the latest cutting edge chip technology. And when you're working in hostile environments, such as the locations of the Russian oil and gas facilities, a lot of them are in very cold climates. You need to keep up with technology to make sure that everything is working fine. And Russia currently has an aging technology base, and it simply doesn't have its own infrastructure to be able to develop that technology itself. And as a result of all of these issues, Russia is now having to announce these cutbacks. And one of the major risks that Russia is now running is that if more of these drones get through and hit these facilities, it's going to cause complete chaos in the industry because the more damage that's inflicted by Ukraine, the more repairs that Russia is going to have to initiate. And that's going to cause them major issues when they don't have the partnerships or the technology. And as a result of the problems that are going on right now, Russia recently announced a six month ban on the export of all gasoline, which Russia said was as a result of the fact that it needed to prioritize its own consumers. And it's now been announced that Russia is importing gasoline from its neighbor, Belarus. Russia is reported to have increased gasoline imports from neighboring Belarus in March to tackle the risk of shortages in its domestic market because of unscheduled repairs at Russian refineries after drone attacks. Usually Russia is a net exporter of fuel and a supplier to international markets, but the disruption of Russian refining has forced oil companies to import. Russia normally imports very little fuel from Belarus, although it did turn to it between August and October 2023 when it faced fuel shortages that led to a rapid rise in gasoline prices and prompted another oil product export ban. In 2024, Russia has increased gasoline imports from Belarus and in the first half of March they reached almost 3,000 metric tonnes. In February, Russia imported 590 tonnes, while in January there were no shipments at all from Belarus. Belarus only has two oil refineries, the Naftan oil refinery in Novopolotsk and the Mozia oil refinery. Each has a capacity of around 240,000 barrels per day, but they typically run at lower capacity, each refining around 180,000 barrels a day. It's unclear how much Belarus can increase production and industry sources have said that they have technical bottlenecks. The refineries in Belarus use mostly Russian oil as a feedstock, while Russian oil companies, which have Belarusian subsidiaries, also buy gasoline from refineries to supply their Belarusian fuel stations. So what's the summary and conclusion today? Well, I wanted to post this video because I think what's happening right now in terms of Ukraine's use of drones is completely changing the perspective of the war in Ukraine. In the first two years of the conflict, Ukraine was entirely on the back foot. Russia was the aggressor and Ukraine was basically trying to get as much help and support and equipment to fend off the attacks as best it could. However, the recent change in the focus of the war to sending unmanned drones over Russian soil to attack Russian oil and gas facilities is having the biggest single impact out of anything Ukraine have done in the last two and a bit years. Because every time one of these drones gets through Russia's defences and strikes these oil refineries, it's causing fires to break out, it's causing chaos at the facility, and most importantly, it's causing damage, which is very difficult for Russia to repair. Because as we discussed earlier in the video, Russia no longer has any relationship with its trading partners, the companies that help them build those facilities, it's struggling in terms of access to technology and it's
it's also struggling in terms of access to capital because the reason that Russia teamed up with a lot of these multinationals was because they've got deep pockets and they could fund all of the build that Russia wanted them to go through. And as we talked about earlier in the video, the damage that's caused by these drone strikes isn't just being contained to that particular part of the refinery because refineries work in a system. You have a process where things move through systematically. So if you damage one particular part of it, it can result in the entire plant closing down until you fix that problem. So these strikes are causing massive problems from Russia's point of view. And as we saw from the data, it's estimated that around 14% of Russia's total capability, which is around 900,000 barrels per day, has been affected as a result of the strikes that have taken place so far. And as these refineries produce high value end products, such as gasoline and diesel, we're talking about an average price per barrel of around $100. So when you're talking about 900,000 barrels per day at $100, that's $90 million worth of revenue that Russia is losing every single day. So on an annualized basis, that's around $33 billion. But of course, an annual impact of $33 billion isn't the potential damage. If Ukraine is successful in delivering 3 million drones during 2024, 2 million that it's producing itself and a million that being produced in the rest of Europe. That means that Ukraine could potentially launch up to 3 million attacks, which compares to around two or 300 that it's launched so far in 2024. So that is an incredible increase in the amount of these drone attacks. And even if a fraction of those drones are successful in hitting those targets, we could be talking about 45, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, or even 100% of Russia's oil and gas refinery capabilities being affected by these strikes over the course of the next 12 months. And the financial impact of that on the Russian economy would be absolutely massive because firstly, it would lose all of the income that it's earning from exporting all of those products, obviously. So that would hit Russia directly in the pocket. Secondly, there would be the knock-on implication of not producing enough gasoline and diesel for its own economy. So all of the businesses within Russia would also be affected. There would potentially be shortages within Russia, which would therefore have a knock-on implication to all of those companies. They would then start producing less, and so their exports would also fall, their income would fall. That means that the taxes that they're paying in the Russian economy would also fall. We'd also see mass redundancy in terms of all of the people that are employed both in the refining industry and the wider oil industry and also all of those companies that are being affected by the shortages. So this, in summary, would be an absolute nightmare from Russia's point of view. This could have the potential of closing down the Russian economy. So the overall summary of today's video is that what we've seen over the last six weeks is that Ukraine is now targeting infrastructure located in Russia because it sees it as a much smarter option than trying to fight Russia on the battlefield. So far, around nine or ten of those drones have successfully landed. They've hit the facilities that they've been targeting. And those strikes have resulted in around 900,000 barrels of oil production being lost per day so far. If Ukraine is successful in ramping up its attacks and its strikes, then Russia is potentially looking at losing millions of barrels of oil production per day, which will have a monumental impact on Russia's income and its economy, and is the biggest chance that Ukraine has of bringing some sort of resolution to this war out of anything that it's come up with so far. So hopefully you've enjoyed today's video, you found it useful, informative and thought-provoking. If you've liked what I've said, then please give me a thumbs up. Thank you for watching this video all the way through to the end, and here's something to put a smile on your face.